Hi. Today we'll do an example code on exception propagation. So we will demonstrate exception propagation and we will start by defining two classes. So I've already defined uh, two classes. One is main.java and one is exception scope.java. So we'll start by writing the class name, so public class exception scope and there, we're not going to create a constructor we're just going to use the default constructor so I'll then write we'll just start by writing the method so I'll create a public void method and we'll call it level 1 And then we'll just write system dot out dot print line, and we'll just type level one beginning. And then we'll create a try block. So try. And then we'll just write level 2. We'll call the level 2 method that we haven't created yet. And then we'll create an exception handler. So we'll write catch and then we'll catch an arithmetic exception. And we'll just call it E. And then we'll system dot out dot print line. Just an empty line. And then we'll system dot out dot print line again, and then we'll type the exception method message sorry message. The exception message is, and then plus e dot get message. So we'll call the get message method. So the get message method. It's in it's part of the java.lang.throwable class and it's defined as public string get message. So it returns the detail returns the detail message string of this throwable. It returns the detail message string of this throwable instance. So remember instance means object and which may be null. So basically all it does is it prints a detailed message about the exception. So in this case, it's going to print a message about an arithmetic exception. So then we'll system dot out dot print line. And then we'll system dot out dot print line. And then we'll say the call stack trace and then we'll call our exception object e and then we'll call the print stack trace method so the print stack trace method is a part of the java.lang.throwable class it's defined as public void print stack trace it prints this throwable and its backtrace to the standard error stream. This method prints a stack trace for the throwable object on the error output stream. That is the value of the field system dot error. The first line of output contains the result of this two string method for this object. Remaining lines represent data previously recorded by the method fill in stack trace. The format of this information depends on the implementation, but not the following example may be regarded as typical. So basically, the call stack trace is just a list of the method calls that resulted in the exception being thrown. So we'll just uh, system dot out, and then we'll just print a blank line here. 
and then we'll system dot out again. And then we'll just write level one ending. So we'll create another method. So public void and then level two. No parameters. And then we'll just system dot out dot print line. Level two beginning. And then we'll call the level three method. And then we'll system dot out dot print line. Level one. Ending. We'll create another method, public void, level three. And we'll create two local variables. In new equals 10. And then 10 equals zero. Then we'll system dot out dot print line. And then we'll just type level three beginning. And then we'll just create a, another variable and we'll call it result. And we'll just say result equals noom divided by den. And then we'll system dot out dot print line. And then we'll type level three ending. So we'll save that and then we'll go to the main class. So we'll just define the class public class main. And then we'll call the command line. So public static void main string array args. And then we'll create an object of type exception scope. We'll call it OBJ and then we'll set it equal to new exception scope. And then we'll system dot out. And we'll just type program beginning. And then we'll call obj and we'll invoke the level one method. And then system dot out. And we'll just write program ending. So just save and run that. So in the main method, we created an object of type exception scope. We called it OBJ and we set it equal to new exception scope. And then we type program beginning. That got wrote, written here. And then we called our object to invoke the level one method. So we go to the level one method. And then it printed out level one beginning. And then we go into our try block and then we call level two. So we go down to level two. And then it's system dot out level two beginning. That got written here, level two beginning to the user. And then we called level three. So then we go down to the level three method. We created two local variables and then we printed out level three beginning. 
then it performed division by zero, and that's where our exception occurred. So when that happened, since we didn't catch and handle the exception in level three, the exception, so we propagated back to the level two method and in the level two method, the exception wasn't handled here either. So we propagated back to the level one method. And that's where we caught and handled the exception, which was the arithmetic exception. So when that happened, when the exception occurred, we went into our exception handler and then printed out a new line. And then it printed out the new lines here. Then it printed out, it called our exception object and it, pre it invoked the get message method, which printed out a detailed message about our exception that got printed here. And then it printed out a new line. And then it printed out the call stack trace and then it called our exception object E to invoke the print stack trace method. And that got called right here. So remember the call stack trace is just a list of method calls that resulted in an exception being thrown. So it just says java.lang.arithmetic exception and the exception that occurred was divide by zero and occurred in level three. So in our level three method, that's where the exception occurred and the level three method was called in the level two method. That's why it's now pointing to the level two method and it's saying in the level one method. It's gonna to point to level one method and it's showing us that it was level two was invoked there. And then it now points to main to the main method. So in the main method, it's showing us that level one was invoked in the main method. So the exception scope program demonstrates the process of exception propagation. The main method invokes method level one in the exception scope class, which invokes method level two, which invokes method level three, which produces an exception. Method level three does not catch and handle the exception so control is transferred back to level two. The level two method does not catch and handle the exception either. So control is transferred back to level one because the invocation of level one is made inside a try block. Sorry, because the invocation of level two is made inside a try block in method level one, the exception is caught and handled at that point. Note that the program output does not include the messages indi indicating that the methods level three and level two are ending. These print line statements are never executed because an exception occurred and had not yet been caught. But after method level one handles the exception, processing continues normally from that point, printing the messages indicating that method level one and the program are ending. So right here, it printed out level one ending. Right there. And then lastly, it printed out program ending at the end of our main method. So I hope that helps you understand exception propagation. Thanks.